Hello House Church, welcome back to Developing Holy Habits. We have made it to part three. I'm so grateful that you are here and I hope that wherever you are, you are safe and you are well. I am excited about what we have to go over today and for you to continue in the good work that you're doing to craft and create your rule of life. Um, I thought that with this part, I would start off with just doing a super brief recap um, we've talked about some really important things and I always think that it's a good idea every now and then to take some time to stop and to look down and to remember the foundation that you're standing on. Um, what is it that you're standing on? Why is it that you're here? Um, so in order for do that, I, to do that, I am just going to read again for us what a rule of life is and we're just going to take a moment with that. Um, before we jump into forming the last three categories of spiritual practices. Um, I know that if you're watching this video, you've chosen to be here, but I just want to remind us about why we are here, um, how we are seeking God, and what our hope is for living with a rule of life. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to repeat for us what a rule of life is. Um, your personal rule of life is a holistic description of the spirit-empowered rhythms and relationships that create, redeem, sustain, and transform the life God invites you to humbly fulfill for Christ's glory. So this is a reminder that this is an invitation that we are seeking to create and live into holistic and spirit-empowered rhythms, that we are seeking creation, redemption, sustenance, and transformation. Right? Those are the things that we are hopeful for um, with the rhythms that we are creating. And so those are the elements that we're standing on. When we stop and we look down, that's where we are. Um, and if at, if at any point in this process you lose sight of this, um, you start to feel like this process is restrictive or feels kind of more like a short-term challenge, I want you to come back to this. Um, the invitation that we have to humbly use our lives to fulfill Christ's glory, right? That is our why. So I thought I just wanted to start here and to remind us to come back to it at any point. Um, and also a reminder for you that we are doing this process through prayer. Um, back in part one, we started this really great rhythm, right? Where we ask through prayer, where we listen through prayer, and then when we use, we use that, that to adjust and to respond to where we feel like God is leading us and asking us to lean into. Um, so as you get excited and get busy filling in your rule of life, just remember why you're here and remember to do so prayerfully. Um, I wanted to start off with these reminders because the priorities that we are going to talk about today are pretty big. Um, we're talking about physical priorities. We're talking about financial and resource priorities and missional and vocational priorities. Those are big, those are big questions. Those are big deals. Um, so as you move through them, I just wanted us to kind of reground ourselves and remember why it is that we are looking at how we take care of our bodies, how we spend our money, and what we are hopeful for um, with the life that we live. And also, at this point, hopefully you have had some time to put into practice some of the rhythms that you have created for your spiritual and your relational um, priorities, those spiritual practices. Um, good job, and I want to just encourage you to continue in with those rhythms. Um, doing so, giving yourself grace, also challenging yourself along the way. Um, and as time goes on, to remember to take time to reflect on what has changed for you, right? To acknowledge the ways that your relationship with God and your life have been transformed or have experienced growth, um, the joy that you have received, the answers that you have gotten to prayer, um, take time to notice that, write those things down. You are doing such good work and in being intentional about how you live your life daily, weekly, um, monthly. And so I just want you to pay attention to what you have noticed as you have started to implement some really intentional spiritual practices. Um, okay, so we're in part three and our goal for part three is to complete that grid 
you've started filling in the first two categories of your rule of life. We're going to finish it today. Um, and in order to do that, we will start with talking about physical priorities. As we talk about physical priorities, um, I and the rhythms that we want to create, the mindset that I want to offer you is this. Um, I want you to offer your full self into the loving embrace of God. Um, our bodies are sacred, and in this section, I want you to be thinking about ways that you can honor and take care of your body. Um, I feel like we have, or our, either we or our culture has a tendency to either really think negatively about our bodies, or we have this mindset of, what can I do better? Better, better, better. Like, it's always an improvement track. Um, how can I look better? How can I eat better? How can I perform better? Um, and that is not a negative mindset at all. That's just not the mindset that I want us to use for this um, section as we go through creating spiritual practices for our bodies. Um, we are seeking rhythms of physical care as an act of worship and to honor the creation that you are and the intention that was given to your body as being a living representation of God's love. Um, the Imago Dei, which means the image of God. So as you, as you think about and reflect on the questions that I have for you, and as you think about implementing spiritual practices that honor your body and that use your body as worship, I want you to really be rooted in the truth that you are created in the image of God um, and the truth that through how you take care of your body and use your body, you also have the opportunity to offer um, the image of God to others. I also wanted to just read a passage um, for you from scripture for us to kind of have in our hearts and our minds as we move throughout this section. So I'm going to read from you from Psalm 139 verses 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you saw my unformed body. Um, so just hold that with you, keep that with you as you go through these questions and think about um, your physical priorities. Okay, so with that little intro, um, again, we're looking at how we can care for and train our body, which also includes our mind and our heart. Um, we're thinking about how we can use our bodies to worship and how we can use our bodies to live out obedience and faithfulness. Um, as you know, we do a lot of reflection work in this class. So I have four questions that I want you to think through. Um, I'll go over them with you now, but as usual, um, there is a Google Doc of reflection questions that is included in the description of this video below. Um, all right, so the first reflection question that I have for you is how do you rest your body? Um, that may sound like a really simple question. I know when I think of that, the first things that come to my mind are how much sleep am I getting and what, what am I doing to like let my body sleep or take a nap um, or sit down. And those are good things. Um, I think sleep, the amount of sleep that you get every night is really important. Please think about that, track that, and put it into your rule of life. We are unable to be fully functioning humans if we're not sleeping at night. Um, students, especially for you, sleep is so important. So um, the summer is usually a great season for us to develop really good sleeping habits and to carry that into the school year. So I encourage you um, with these last few weeks that we have of summer to be really intentional about the sleep that you get at night. Um, and I wanna offer you another way of thinking about and looking at rest. Um, I recently had someone describe faith to me as though you are walking upstream in a river. 
Um, immediately when I think of that, I have this image in my mind, right? There's water, the current of the water is going around your body and you're walking upwards. Um, there are beautiful trees and there are birds chirping. Um, the sky is beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful scenery, um, but it's hard work walking upstream in this river. river. So that's faith, right? When we think about faith, that's the metaphor I'm going with. Um, and every now and then, right? Well, every step that you take, you have to be intentional with. When you're walking, you have to feel that the rocks beneath your feet are steady. You have to make sure that if you if you step down and you put your full body weight down, you can stay in without falling. Um, and every now and then, you're gonna probably stop, catch your breath, take a sip of water, and probably look around you to see the scenery. You might look back to see how far you've come. You might look forward to see how much farther you have to go. You might look around to see who's with you. Um, and that, that moment where you stop and you're taking water and you're taking in the scenery, that is rest, but it is active. If you are standing in the middle of a flowing river, your body is engaged. Your muscles are working. Um, your feet are firmly planted. Your eyes are wide awake. It's not a passive activity that you're doing. You aren't letting go of anything. You are stopping the forward motion of your body, but it is active. And that is, I think, a beautiful way to look at rest, especially in our lives as people who are pursuing Christ and doing um, kingdom work, to think about ways that you, what does it mean for you to be walking up, upstream in a river, and what does it mean for you to stop and to actively take account of where am I and to actively prepare for the next step that you're going to take. Um, so I encourage you to use that metaphor to think about ways that you you can rest your body, you can rest your heart and your mind, um, and use that as you fill out this section for physical priorities. Um, the next question that I want you to reflect on is how you can replenish your body. Um, again, I'm going to ask you to get creative with how you answer these questions. Obviously, we can and should be replenishing our body with water. We have to stay hydrated. Um, if you're like me, I have to replenish my body with coffee. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're eating foods that are nourishing and healing to our body. But what are other ways that you can bring replenishment to your body on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly basis? Um, the next thing that I want you to think about is how you can renew your body. Um, for me, there are kind of two things that I think about when I think about renewal. One, I think about physical activity, right? I think that's where this fits in. Um, are you going, do you like to go on walks? Do you like to hike? Are you a runner? Do you like to swim? Do you like to surf? Are you a skateboarder? Do you play soccer? Um, do you go kayaking? Like think of, think of things that bring joy to you. Um, and also th think of ways that you like to move your body to bring renewal. Do you do yoga? Do you like to stretch? Um, things like that. The other thing I like to think about is for me, a really tangible way that I bring renewal to my body is by going to the chiropractor. So think about, are you seeing your doctor? Do you go to the dentist? Do you have a chiropractor? Do you have to get a massage? Like what are ways that you like actively can care for and re bring renewal to your body because your body goes through a lot on a day-to-day -day basis so what do you need um for me it's taking account of what hurts where do i have aches and pains and how can i not ignore those things and how can i take care of them the last question um, for this section is how do you release your body for me when i think about release the first word that comes to my mind is stress um, so for that, I think of how can I relieve my body of stress? How can I leave, relieve my body of tension, pressure? Um, this can, this, you might answer the question with more mindfulness activities. Um, this also kind of ties back into the rest, but what sorts of things does your body need to be released from? And how are you going to do that? So think about the ways that you are already currently resting, replenishing, renewing, and experiencing release for your body. And then think about the things that you need to give greater attention to. And then how will you create greater attention to those areas? That's where the rhythm gets to come into play. 
Um, so think about what you need and then figure out how you can do those things daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, etc. Be realistic about the rhythms that you commit to and be intentional about them. Um, and remember that as you go, evaluate to make sure that your rhythms are sustainable and life-giving. After you've gone through a week or two of the daily and weekly rhythms that you've created, take a minute or two to evaluate how did that go for me? Is this sustainable? What can I um, add in? If anything, is that do I need to you know adjust the amount of things that I'm doing? Um, but continue to evaluate as you move through the process. Um, and again, I have included a, a sample, like an example rule of life that is filled out, and that also is included in the video description below. Okay, so moving on to the next section, we are going to talk about financial and resource priorities. Um, I wanted to use the language of resource in addition to financial because for this section, I don't want us to get stuck thinking only about money or about our finances. Um, I really want us to expand our thinking to include any resources, whether they are material or other that you can be generous with, that you can be sacrificial with, um, and that you can practice stewardship with. Um, this can be a tangible thing that you could actually give or use, or it could be a resource such as time or maybe a gift or a talent that you have that you want to be intentional about how you use it for yourself and for others. Um, so as you think about this, this section, I want you to think kind of what I just said about um, how you can be intentional with using your resources in your own life. So for your own personal walk with the Lord, how are you using those resources? And then how are you using those resources, whether it be money or other resources, with intention to have impact in your community? So on a personal level, I want you to think about how you would describe your relationship to your material and financial resources. Um, when you think about the things that you have or the way that you spend your money, what role do those things have in your relationship with God? Are there ways that you would like to glorify God with the things that you have or the ways that you use them? And then think about what resources or finances you have that you can empower or support your community. This could be being thoughtful about where you shop, um, if maybe you're being mindful about eliminating waste, eliminating waste with how you shop, um, this could be about how you tithe in the church or make donations to a local organization. Um, and if money is not a resource that you are able to invest, again, don't get stuck with that. But what other resources do you have that could bring value to your community? Do you have time that you want to volunteer or commit to a group of people or an, or an organization? Um, what resources do you have that the Lord is asking you to use um, to evaluate or to, or to lean into? So I really want to challenge you for this section to take time to evaluate how you are a steward of the resources that you have. Um, to steward something simply means to take care of it. So how are you taking care of the resources that you have? In that care, how are you taking care of yourself? How are you taking care of your family? And how are you taking care of your community? As you prayerfully fill out this section, use the reflection questions that I have included in that handy Google Doc and um, use those to help form the rhythms that you want to include in your rule of life. Think about how you want to keep track of the resources that you have. It may be a daily or a weekly evaluation of your spending or your time and how often you want to invest in yourself and others and what that looks like on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next section, the last section, um, looking at our missional and vocational priorities. Back in week one, you answered some really great and really big questions. Um, kind of, you were thinking about what matters most to you in life, what you feel responsible for, and if there is anything that you have discerned as a call over your life. And I just want you to be reminded again that um, maybe back in May, when you first answered these questions, that's shifted for you now. And that's okay, that's good. We're gonna keep rolling with the transformative process that you are in. 
Um, but the answer, the way that you answer those questions, that's how we are going to be forming our rhythms for this section of our rule of life. Um, in order to fill out this section, I really want you to think about where and with whom you are currently investing yourself and where and with whom you would like to in the future be able to invest yourself. I also want you to consider how you are spending your time, especially during the busiest season of your life. Think about that time and, and reflect with that. What does your capacity look like? How many things are you involved in? How many things are you committing your time to? Um, are there too many things so that you are not able to fully commit or invest in one thing? Um, or do you have time that you could invest more time into something? Um, and look into the future as you plan for where you want to go. And I encourage you to think about the things that you could be doing now to prepare for that. So are there um, trainings that you need? Is there a continued education that you want to do so that you can be prepared to do whatever is next for you? Um, and be thinking about how you can be intentional and committed to preparing for that mission or vocation now with, again, the time and the resources that you have. Um, for me, this also means that I am continually in prayer about where God is calling me. This means continually asking God about what I am doing and asking God about where God needs me to be. That is, that is actually one of the practices that I use in my daily and my weekly rhythm is asking the Lord, the here is where I am, is this what you still have for me? And to really approach this um, section with an open hands method, um, this really just to me means surrender. It means that I am fully, my feet are fully planted where I am, but I want God to be able to speak into if I need to move, if I need to stay, um, and for me to be able to move and respond in that way. Um, so again, there are some re reflection questions for you in the Google Doc below and use those to help yourself fill out um, this last section in your rule of life. Um, so once you get through these three sections, you have completed the formation part of your rule of life. Um, I want to congratulate you if you are here and watching this, you're doing a lot of really good work. Um, and just to r remind you to continue to move slowly and do so, pr do so prayerfully. Um, I know for myself this has been a, a life-giving experience to go through this summer um, and it, it has also been really challenging as well. So I just want you to be encouraged in what you are doing. Um, I look forward to hopefully one day getting to hear more about the things that you have incorporated and are hopeful for. Um, and in part four, we will be talking more about how to make this sustainable um, and how to continue to evaluate where we are at and to how you can make your rule of life be something that you use um, really for the rest of your life. So that is it for part three. As always, if you have any questions or um, need access to a document, let me know. Again, I am so grateful that you are here. Thank you for spending time developing your holy habits. Um, see you soon.